This is iPhone 12. It's a fantastic overall package, if not the most exciting iPhone ever made. And this is iPhone 12 Pro. It has the same display, the same battery, and the same design. So wait, why, why does this exist again? The iPhone 12 lineup may be confusing, but today's video sponsor Privacy sure isn't. Privacy lets you buy things online using virtual credit cards instead of real ones, protecting your identity and sensitive bank information when you shop online. One great use for privacy is monthly payments. You can set up a virtual card with a monthly spend limit so that you can only use it for one thing and you know that you won't be overcharged. You can also use privacy for one-time purchases with vendors you might not want to have your credit card stored. Plus, privacy now has a tagging feature that lets you sort your cards by category to keep track of and limit your spending. Privacy is great not just for protecting your information, but for sorting and organizing your online payments, whether they're one time or recurring. So definitely check out Privacy with my link in the description below, privacy.com slash Luke Miani. If you do choose to sign up with my link in the description, you'll get $5 off your first purchase. So head over there and check it out. So in yesterday's video, I looked at the iPhone 12 and I declared it basically the default iPhone. So that makes the 12 Pro whatever the opposite of default is. The big difference, in my opinion, between this year's Pro and non-Pro is that finally the normal 12 doesn't feel like it was made by taking features away from the big boy to cut down the price. This is great news, but it leaves the 12 Pro in a weird spot. How do you justify it? So what exactly does the iPhone 12 Pro do better? Well, it has a telephoto lens, it can take night mode portraits, it shoots Apple Pro Raw, it has a LiDAR sensor, the frame is made from stainless steel instead of aluminum, and the back glass is frosted, which is more comfortable to hold. The screen is a little bit brighter, it has six gigabytes of RAM compared to four, and 128 gigabytes of standard storage rather than 64 gigabytes as tested. And well, that's really it. If you equip the iPhone 12 with 128 gigabytes, like the 12 Pro, there's still a $120 difference between those phones with arguably not a ton of features in between. So the question is, why would you buy the iPhone 12 Pro? What about it is actually better? Well, for one, there's the aesthetics. It's no secret that Apple's marketing relies on their design and their brand cachet, and the iPhone 12 Pro is absolutely a beautiful phone. This year's gold color is a real stunner. It looks absolutely blinged out. You know how every year people gold dip their iPhones to try and be extra fancy? Yeah, it kind of looks like that, only it's not as audacious and it's not any more expensive. So I guess that's kind of a win-win. As good as it looks, I have to say, I'm kind of over the shiny finish on the side rails. They show smudges very, very easily, and perhaps more frustratingly, they show micro abrasions over time. So while they do look a little better, there are some times where I wish I had the aluminum side rails that don't smudge or gunk up. But on the other, other hand, I am a huge fan of the frosted back glass. It's really, really comfortable, it doesn't show smudges, and it looks phenomenal. Whatever you think of the more premium materials, the result is that even though the iPhone 12 is the exact same size as the 12 Pro, the Pro is noticeably heavier. That could be a good or bad thing depending on your preferences. On the one hand, you could say, well, the iPhone 12 Pro feels solid and more robust, but on the other side, you could say, well, I'd like a lighter phone. All right, time to talk cameras. Let's put up the obligatory still photos of both of these phones while we talk about this. Basically, I gotta be honest, I don't notice any difference at all between the wide and ultra wide cameras on each of these phones. There might be some subtle differences, but you'd have to have both phones side by side to notice them. I do, however, appreciate the telephoto lens. Having the extra optical zoom range is great, and when you do have to zoom in super close, the 12 Pro retains much more detail than the 12. We also get some little frosting features, such as night mode portraits, and supposedly LiDAR makes autofocus faster, but 
I didn't really notice a difference. As for Pro Raw recording, I need more time to really get a read on it, but it's nice to have the additional freedom with adjustments for your videos. So the Pro's camera system is nicer overall, but not $120 nicer unless you're a filmmaker and you use iPhones as your main camera. In that case, you know, you're probably gonna want the best and you're probably gonna save up and just wait for the 12 Pro Max anyway. Now, one of the common threads that I've seen people say is, oh, well, the iPhone 12 Pro has a brighter screen and has more RAM, so that's definitely gotta be worth something, right? Well, no, not at all. I genuinely don't think anyone will be able to tell the difference. I mean, I have both phones side by side, and I have not noticed any difference in performance or in the screen brightness. They look exactly the same. I will say that the extra RAM won't make a difference now, but it's possible that in four or five years, it might make a difference. And that's something that you gotta think about with an iPhone. Think long term with these things. They last a long time. So all in all, there's not a particularly long list of improvements on the 12 Pro. There's no one feature that makes you go, whoa, I gotta get the Pro. That might have been the case with ProMotion. I mean, I certainly would have bought the iPhone 12 Pro in a heartbeat with ProMotion. I mean, I guess I also bought it without ProMotion, so. However, I went into this video thinking that this was gonna be a really easy review. It was gonna be, all right, don't bother with the 12 Pro, just get the normal 12. But the more I've used it, the more I'm growing to like the 12 Pro. It's not necessary by any means. There's no must have feature, but there are reasons to like it. For example, if we assign a cost to the extra features, maybe it would be easier to understand. Would you pay an extra $20 for the additional camera? How about 50 bucks for the nicer materials and more durable frame? Would you throw in $20 to get that LiDAR sensor to play around with AR? Maybe another 25 to bump up the RAM and get another year of use out of it down the road? It really depends. Some people will genuinely pay extra just to have the nicer materials. I mean, look at the Apple Watch, for example. It costs an extra $300 to upgrade from the aluminum case to the stainless steel case. You don't get any additional features at all, but lots of people do that because let's be honest, we'd be kidding ourselves if we said that Apple isn't a lifestyle brand. People are willing to pay extra just for the looks. I mean, some people bought the 18 karat gold Apple Watch a couple of years ago. People bought the iPhone 11 Pro last year when they didn't need the features just because it looked nicer. So it's absolutely believable that materials alone are gonna cause people to upgrade. So that got a little bit existential there, kind of a commentary on consumerism, but at the very least, unlike with the Apple Watch, the extra money you spend on the 12 Pro does get you some features. It's not just aesthetic. So to answer the original question, does the iPhone 12 Pro exist for a reason? Well, yeah, it does. It's a noticeable, if not major upgrade. Here's basically the way I would go about deciding. Start with a baseline of iPhone 12, the default, and then really ask yourself how much you would pay for the additional features. Some people will absolutely pay for the better cameras. Some will pay still more for the Pro Max cameras next month. I'm sure some will pay for the materials and color alone. Basically, my advice is this. If you're tempted to go for the Pro, talk yourself into it. You should try to objectively examine the information and make a case as to why you should spend the extra. If you cannot justify that, then don't do it. Just buy the normal iPhone 12 and you're gonna be very happy. So that does it for my review of the iPhone 12 Pro. Honestly, I liked this phone more than I thought I would. I still don't think it's necessary for a lot of people, but it's definitely a good phone. Well, that's a scalding hot take there. Hey guys, the new iPhone is good. Anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani and check out my subreddit and my Twitch channel in the description below. Thanks to Privacy for sponsoring today's video. And with that, I will see you all in the next one. Hello. Again? Well, that's annoying. My, my parked car got hit again. That's the second time that's happened. Okay, anyway, back to the video.